Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I'm, my name is Marcus. Um, I'm a software engineer with uh, Snowflake, and I'm working on CoreFDB for three and a half years now. Um, and I want to give you all an introduction into, into Flow. So what is Flow? That's probably the most important thing to get. <laughs> like, if you read the abstract, you might already know. So Flow is a programming language um, that implements the actor-based concurrency model. So think of Erlang, and you're not that far off. Um, so with Flow, you can write highly concurrent programs. It doesn't support parallelism. That's actually a feature. Um, it kind of ships with an extensive library for platform-independent um, I.O. Uh, th ships is in quotes because we don't really ship flow. Or you could say it also ships with a distributed database. Um, and it has exactly one implementation, at least as far as I'm aware of. And <clears throat> um, this implementation, implementation serves also as the specification because there's no specification. And it's a C-sharp compiler that emits C++ code. And it is one of the main building blocks of FDB because all of core FDB is written in Flow. So there was a forum thread that was asking this question, why was Flow developed? And <clears throat> I would encourage you to go to the forum and like check the answers. This is kind of my take, and I have to warn you that this might be wrong because it's just my impression. <laughs> um, I'm not one of the original authors, so uh, they might also have had other strong reasons. But basically the main motivation, it seems, was to better, like to allow for this simulation type of testing that Foundation DB implements, which is like FDB's secret sauce. Um, also, resumable functions were not available in C++ at the time. They technically still are not, but they might be in C++ 20. So we might be able to replace flow eventually. Um, and C++ was chosen as a, um, for performance reasons. Um, I like to understand stuff by looking at how it actually works. So what I encourage you to do if you want to learn flow is write a small actor or steal one from, this one is stolen from the, from, from the library, so this is like a help on actor that gets used all over the place. Um, take one of these short functions and run it through the actor compiler and look at the generated code. It's very painful, but it's a very helpful experience to do it at once. So I won't go through all the generated code because it would fit on probably 15 slides, and I don't think you would enjoy that. Um, <laughs> but basically, so what this thing is doing is um, it waits on some input and then takes the resulting value and sends it to a number of promises. And so the two keywords that you can see in here, and these are language keywords, um, is actor and wait. And they are just the equivalent of async and await in like C Sharp or uh, I think JavaScript has that as well in Python. Um, <clears throat> the other fundamental building block is futures and promises. So a future is, uh, can hold a value now or in the future. And a promise can be used to send that value to a number of futures. Um, the way this is implemented, very rough. So there's this SAV object, which, which you will never encounter when you just use flow, um, which is a single assignment variable, I think it means. But it, there's no code comment, so I wouldn't know. Um, <clears throat> and this one stores a value, and it's basically reference counted. So there are promises and future ref counts. And the promises and futures are kind of like smart pointers to that object. And it, can also ha it also points to a linked list of callbacks. So whenever the value is set, it will call into all the callbacks that are registered to that. So to generate a code very quickly, like the, the, the function itself will look like that. Not very interesting, but basically we create a new future that gets this broadcast actor. So that's how the generated class, the generated actor is called um, as an argument. 
And if we look at how that looks like, I will, like, this might be a bit too much information for one slide. But the basic idea here is that each actor is an SAV object in itself. It has some additional state. Everything in blue here is part of the code, and everything in red is generated by the actor compiler. Um, there's the actor state, so remember this is all callback based, the generator code, there's no stack for each actor, and all the state that has to, has to survive a wait statement is stored in that class. And actually also most of the logic, or almost all of the logic is in the, in the state class and not in the broadcast actor class. And the broadcast actor class is mostly there to bring everything together. Um, and so when you run a program, this will just generate callbacks for you and it will take, take the dirty work that you would usually do if you are familiar with like boost SEO where this can get pretty painful. Um, this is obviously not all, so there are a few more language features. Um, so one problem is there's no stack and we have a compiler that is not very um, language aware, let's put it that way. So if you write a function like this, so this is basically takes the current time and then it's just an endless loop. It will sleep for one second um, and then gets woken up after that one second and it prints the time from now minus the start time. So it will tell you how many second it, seconds it did run for. Um, and this loop keyword is basically just the redefinition of while true. So it's just an endless loop. Um, this will not compile. And the reason for that is after like this wait keyword actually registers a callback and returns out of the function, so you lose your stack, which means that if, when you try to access start time in the line afterwards, you will get a compilation error and the compiler will tell you that this variable doesn't exist in that context. So to solve that, there's a state keyword which you can add to um, <coughs> to your, uh, in front of that variable declaration. And what that will do is it will tell the actor compiler, hey, I wanna use this variable throughout the life of this actor. Please store it as part of the actor state. Um, so it's a bit similar of like capturing variables in lambdas. Um, <clears throat> another feature is you can wait on multiple futures at once, so you can I mean, you can have as many callbacks as you want to, right? And this is basically what it does. So the, this is mostly presenting the syntax. The example I chose here is not very m meaningful, but basically you can have this choose keyword and then a bunch of when statements and you have to then call wait on some futures that you have there. Another very useful feature is streams. So if you're familiar with Go, there it's used all over the place. Uh, streams are unidirectional in flow. And so there are future streams and promise streams. And you can read from a future stream and you can write to a promise stream. Um, and you can pass these streams to other actors and therefore these two, like two actors can communicate with each other. So this is a very stupid example. I have a small, add function here, an add actor that just waits on a value in a loop. Whenever it receives a value, it will update its internal state um, by just a simple addition, and then it will send it, send the complete sum to, to some promise stream. And in order to use that in a, in a very bad way, so please don't try to make PRs with code like that, you probably won't get that merged. But basically what this is doing is there's this loop that will sleep for a second, then it will send one to this, um, um, to this uh, promise stream, and then it will wait on a future stream to receive the result. Now, one interesting thing here is we don't call wait we call wait next. And this is sadly necessary because again, the actor compiler doesn't really understand C++ correctly, so it wouldn't know the type of whatever is in the parentheses. It cannot do type deduction for us. And because of that, we need to tell it that this is actually a future stream and not a future because the generated code is slightly different in that case. Um, so that's 
basically it. And this is actually most of flow already. There's not much more to it. Um, there's one important library feature, there are remote features. These are technically probably not part of Flow, but of FTP RPC. But this is basically how you can do um, remote procedure calls, or basically you can have futures, promises, and future stream and promise streams having on two different machines, or two different processes. Um, and the, the functions that implement, uh, the, the classes that implement that are request streams, which are um, the equivalent of a future stream. There's the reply promise, which is the equivalent of a promise which you can send to another machine, and then that machine can set the promise and you will get the result. And both of them have a get future method that you can call to, to get the other reading object side of that. Um, a good example to look at, in my opinion, is the, in the FDB code, there's this storage server interface.h which implements all the RPC calls that we use to communicate with uh, storage nodes. And it's pretty readable. Like, it's one of the places that is actually pretty readable. So <clears throat> I'm still doing OK with time. So I want to go into a few of the common pitfalls. So when you start programming in Flow, most people will have some of, will do some of the similar mistakes that we do, just because sometimes flow doesn't quite work in the way we expect it to. And <clears throat> most of these common problems result from the fact that the actor compiler doesn't really understand C++. I mentioned this a, a bunch of times. Like, for example, one really annoying example is if you write lambdas, and I love lambdas, I write, I tended to write them all the time, and now in Flow I use them less because of that. Um, you can't really capture state variables because in the generator code, the state variable is actually a member of a class. Um, <clears throat> and so it, it gets a bit weird. And um, then, as I said before, type deduction doesn't work. So if you write the wait statement, you always have to explicitly declare what type you're waiting on by um, actually reading the result into a variable. Um, and unless it's a, it's a future void, then you can omit that, or actually you have to. And then there's the, the memory management rules, like the best practices how to do memory management are a bit different, and I won't really go into that here because that's like its whole topic for itself. Um, so one common thing that people for trip over initially is that arguments to actors are getting copied into a state. Right? And so if you try to write code as the first line here, right, you try to pass a string as a const reference, then the actor compiler, because it is limited in its C++ knowledge, will try to rewrite it as something like that. I didn't try whether that's the actual code, but it will probably look a bit like that because it will try to copy the reference and not the string, which is not what you want to do in that case. Or you can't, right? so this won't compile. So if you want to pass something by reference, what you have to do is you have to pass a pointer because you can copy pointers, and then this will work. Another thing is that actors, whenever they, if the future count of an actor goes to zero, it will get canceled and it will stop working. So this is the same stupid counter that I had before with one bug that I introduced. So those who like HA should probably see that pretty quickly, what's wrong here. But basically we create this adder actor in like the, I don't know, sixth line or something. And it will run out of scope as soon as we call into wait. And therefore it will get canceled because we didn't pass this future to any other location. Um, so this thing actually has to be a state variable so that it can survive um, this wait call. There are also some weird scoping rules. So this one here will actually compile this actor. Um, it shouldn't, right? But it does. So what's the result of this actor? Right? It's, it's not clear what it should do, right? Should it be five tries? Should it be something else? And actually, if you run that, what happens is that the first line is undefined behavior. So that might give you whatever. 
Um, and then the second print will give you five. And the reason if you understand how state variables work is pretty simple, right? The state variable is just part of the actor state. This one is available throughout the whole, um, while the whole actor is running and there's no, comp like the compiler doesn't actually prevent you from writing code like that. So this is something to be a bit careful about. Um, another one is error handling is a bit weird. Um, so if you write a code like that, and let's say S is like a future to an actor that throws some exception after a while, you will not see that exception if you write the code like this. The reason is exceptions are only propagated if you wait on them, um, or if you explicitly check whether they are storing an error currently. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's basically, it won't be thrown up. And so there are multiple ways of how you can fix that. You can additionally rate on that thing and just assert that it never actually returns anything if it's supposed to be an actor that should run forever. And then you can also catch the exception by just putting everything into a try catch block. Um, like as you can see here, this can get awkward if you have many, many actors. So there's this library class called actor collection and you can just like pass all your futures into that and wait on that actor collection and this will rethrow the error for you. So <clears throat> um, this is it mostly from my side, but I wanted to point out a few um, very useful resources, or I believe useful resources. The first one is there's a very short documentation on Flow. Um, that you should look at if you're interested in that. In, um, in the codes, there's this tutorial.actor.cpp, and please, like, there should be a forum thread or whatever. Look at that. If you see anything missing or see anything unclear, like, mention it, and I will try to update it. It should have code comments on, like, how stuff works. It implements, like, a small key value store, um, like, not a good one. Um, and another thing that is pretty good to look at, there's two versions of generic actors.actor.h, which are files with like helper actor functions. And it's good to have kind of a mental model what's in there. It's basically like algorithm in C++, right? You want to know what's in there because otherwise you re-implement that several times. And you can find stuff like this broadcast function, you can find a map function, you can find operators for and and or. Um, you can do wait or error, which is sometimes useful. There's the flow log thingy, so if you don't want to have two actors concurrently accessing some, some data, you can use that. And there's many, many other useful stuff. And it also helps to understand the code style that you're supposed to use and how you can implement certain things that might not be completely obvious how it should be implemented. Like a lot of stuff is in there. So to me, this was actually one of the best learning resources to just look at that header file. Um, so please go to the forum if you have questions and I will try to answer as many of them as I can and other people like AJ and Alex and whatever will also be there and will help. Thanks a lot.